Finally, we get to my number one corner in the 2021 NFL Draft. And, of course, it's PS2. PlayStation. Patrick Sertan II. Uh, Bloodlines run deep here. Dad was a damn good corner in this league for a long time. Uh, Patrick Sertan Sr. Had some really good years with the Miami Dolphins. Sertan is polished. That's why he's my number one corner. He's just so polished and refined. Everything he does is by the book. It's clean. It's technically sound. There aren't many holes in his game. Is he an elite athlete? No, he's not better. He's not a better athlete than Caleb Farley. Don't think he's a better athlete than J.C. Horn, if we're being uh, uh, perfectly honest with each other. He's just tech, more technically sound than both of those guys. He's advanced in, to me, he's, ready, he's a plug-and-play corner. You put him in right now, and he's ready to go. And he'll play like an eight-year veteran. Right off the buck, right off the, uh, the rip. And I think that is the intrigue surrounding him. Anyway, I digress. Let's flip this card over and take a look at Patrick Sertan II. Strengths, height, weight, speed, specimen. Uh, you, you're talking about a corner that's 6'1", 203 pounds, ran a 4'4", 6'40", at his pro day. Checks off all the boxes. You know, athleticism and length, um, he has it. Again, another long corner with athleticism, speed to match and boot, um, and the athleticism to be able to mirror a receiver, be in phase, hip to hip, and um, this guy, he just doesn't miss. Even when he is off, even when a play is made on him, it's not because of an epic fail by Patrick Sertan II. It was either a great ball or he was slightly out of position, but he's always there. Fluid hips, great change of direction. Great change of direction for Patrick Sertan II. He's what I like to call a smooth operator. Smooth operator. He's a smooth operator, man. Quiet as a mouse at the line of scrimmage. I talked about Caleb Farley and how he, he's just not really here for the games. He's not there for your shenanigans. You can do all the, the head and shoulders dandruff shaking you want to do. You can try and cross them up. And that's just, they're not there for that at the line of scrimmage. They're there to wait for you to declare whether you're going to run, you're going to release outside or you're going to release inside. And then they're going to run and stay in your hip pocket. But you can do all the shaking and having seizures and you can try your hardest to, to imitate an Allen Iverson crossover. They're not going for it, man. This dude, I just love the way he just stands at the line of scrimmage. He's not going to put his hands on you. He's, he's not an aggressor. He's not a physical in your face that's jc horn like he's not looking to molest you at the line of scrimmage i just want to run with you that's it you know if, if i could if i could lay hands on you i will but i'm not going out of my way to put hands on you i just want to run with you i just want to be down i just want to be cool can i do that be in your hip pocket he's just standing there man just like you see him in, in that picture just standing there at the line of scrimmage mouth I, I will never understand why guys have a mouthpiece dangling What's the point of that? Is it, does it look cool or something? I'd much rather keep my teeth in my mouth than have my mouthpiece dangling outside of my unit. And I don't want other people's breath on my mouthpiece. I don't want my mouthpiece hitting the grass and shit. I guess they never really plan to put it in their mouth anyway, but that's another discussion for another day. Um, he just stands there. He's, his demeanor on the field, this is why I call him a smooth operator. It's just even keel. He doesn't get too high. He doesn't get too low. You know, he makes a play. Okay, I just made a play. You make a play. He's not getting up and he's not irate. He doesn't pick up a bunch of penalties. And if he does, he's not berating the official like, oh, my God, I didn't touch him. He's like Kawhi Leonard with a helmet. It's just pretty much the same dude every time. Whether I just dunked on you and served up a facial or had a pick six, same dude. So, um, damn, he's smooth. He's just a smooth dude. LL Sear, always looking back for the rock. Right? There aren't many times where he doesn't look back. This, this is why he didn't get penalized very often. 
from the day he stepped foot on the campus, he was looking back. He's like, bro, you got to look forward if you want to attain and strive for big things. You can't keep looking in your rearview mirror. He's always looking back. <laughs> He's got the CNC ability that you crave, that you look for, the ability to click and close, drive on everything, be right there in the hip pocket. He got it. In a normal draft, he's he's a top seven guy. He would have been gone within the first five to seven picks. This is not a normal draft. Savvy player and ball skills. He's got savvy play. What do I mean by that? He's the type of guy that plays to his strengths. Case in point. He knows he's got help to the inside. So what does he do? He overplays the outside, forces the receiver to take an inside release towards the safety, rides him to the safety. All right, job's done. He knows he doesn't have safety help. So what does he do? He rides your ass to the sideline and rails you. Now he's got the extra defender of the sidelines helping him defend and he's running with you, mirroring you, running hip to hip in phase. And you're jammed up against the sidelines with not a lot of operating room. He's just so smart. If he's got help to the inside, I'm going to run you towards my help in the inside. I don't have any help. I'm going to rail your ass towards the sidelines and I'm going to ride you down the sidelines. Good luck. Just a really savvy player, man. Everything he does is with purpose. Not a lot of wasted motion or wasted steps. Everything is done tactically and with purpose. And he's got ball skills. He can make plays on the football. Had a pick six this year. Willing tackler. He'll go up and he'll get in the mix. Not afraid to throw his body around, do what he has to do to get a guy on the ground. Offers you versatility. He can move around. He's the kind of guy that you can use as a star corner. You want to travel? You want to go to the left side? Want to go to the right side? Want to go in the slot? He can follow that guy, and he's done it in college. Off, press, zone, man, he's good at all of it. Bloodlines. His dad, I talked about the Patrick Sertan Sr., Damn good corner. Damn good corner in this league. And experience. He's the most experienced corner in this draft class. In terms of games played and high-level games played and high-level competition. You won't find that competition in another corner in this draft. You won't find that combination, I should say in another corner in this draft guys played in 41 games 41 high level contests yeah there may be a south alabama ass whooping or two in there a Furman, you know there's a couple of those probably in there all right but there there are many more games against lsu and georgia and florida and south carolina there are a lot more of those in there in clemson in ohio state then there are Furmans in, in South Alabama states. So um, he got to play against, listen to this, Henry Ruggs, Jerry Judy, Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle, and I'm missing one. It's one more dude in practice for, for the last three years. Think about that for a second. Like this, this dude is ready. He's ready. Dad's been coaching him up and getting him ready for this moment. This guy's ready. The moment he stepped on the campus at Tuscaloosa, he was ready. They put him out there. He was ready. He hasn't looked back. Uh, weaknesses. Look, I'm, I'm nitpicking. There's not a lot here. Like I said, is he... You know, is he Caleb Farley in terms of athleticism? Is he Patrick Peterson in terms of athleticism? No, no. That might be the one thing you could nitpick at, really, is his long-distance speed. Is, the, is that truly there? 
I didn't see people getting on top of him in college. But at the at the pros, it's a different animal. When he's displaced, he has a delayed gather. So what do I mean by that? I watched Kyle Pitts beat him on a slant in the SEC championship game. Pitts stemmed him outside. He reacted to that first movement, and that's not usually how he operates. I told you he's pretty quiet at the line of scrimmage. But Kyle Pitts is a hell of a route runner, and when he moves, you move. Okay? He's not an average dude. You're not dealing with the average cat. You're dealing with a, with a dog. So if he moves, you move. Just like that. So Kyle Pitts stems him outside. He reacts to it. Pitts then breaks him off, crosses him over. And for that second, he got frozen in time. It's like his, his leg got stuck in the turf and Pitts was able to gain separation. Then he reacted and he drove on it and made it a contested catch, but it was a catch nonetheless. In that same game, Trayvon Grimes goes up and puts his nuts on his helmet, catches it, and runs in for a touchdown. What happens was, uh, what happened on that particular play is he couldn't gather. He overran the football. Trayvon Grimes comes underneath, leaps up, grabs it. He's not in the position to stop, gather, leap up, and make a play. He overran it. He catches it, and he can't transition to go catch him. Touchdown. These are the plays you see happen when he can't gather and, and react. He's out of position for a second. It's rare, but it happens. I'm nitpicking. I don't really have much for you. <laughs> He's really good. There's not a lot of holes in his game. You know what? He's a he's a better athlete. He's he's bigger. He's all those things than Tre'Davious White. But he reminds me of Tre'Davious White coming out of LSU. I remember saying, "Man, Tre'Davious White. He's not. He's his his package isn't delicious. It isn't. He's not a guy you look at and you fall in love with because he's not six one. He's not two. 05, you know, he's not running a 437. You just look at Tredavious White and he's 5'11, 5'10, 5'11 and some change. He's 192 and he's running a 44, you know, 7 or whatever. And you're like, he's all right. He ain't all that. He's he's really good. There, there aren't many holes in his game, but he doesn't get you excited. Well, all he's done is come in the league and kick ass. Because there's not many holes in his game. I feel the same way about Patrick Sertan the second. Yeah, he's bigger, fits, he kind of checks all those boxes, but he's not a blazer. He's not going to wow you with any one attribute, but man, is he good. And he doesn't miss. He doesn't make a ton of mistakes. Again, not a lot of holes in his game. He's as solid as they come. Solid! Solid as a rock! I got a top 15 grade on him in this year's draft. In any other draft, this will be a top 10, top 5 grade, personally. Um, my comp for him is Jimmy Smith. Um, same size, same athleticism, same ability. When Jimmy Smith is healthy, man, he keeps it real quiet on his side of the football field. You know, when Jimmy Smith is right in Baltimore, he keeps it real tight, all right, on his side of the field. Not a lot of holes in his game. Not a lot of penalties. Just really quality football, man. That's Patrick Sertan II. That's PS2. PlayStation. So, whoever gets him is getting a hell of a football player. I will say that. There'll be some battles going on. If he's going up against an upper echelon receiver, there'll be some good battles going on with, with uh, Patrick Sertan II. So, he's my number one wide receiver in the 2021 NFL draft. Louis T. Network.